Alright, so lately I've been talking a lot about fall gardening, so in this video I'm going to be giving you a couple tips and tricks on what you can do to help improve your fall garden. Alright, so if you want the best results and you want to keep it around one specific room temperature, the room temperature to keep it around is 70 degrees to 80 degrees. You can have it as low as 65 degrees, but certain plants will perform a little bit worse in that condition. This also applies to plants you're starting inside as well as, well as your fall slash winter garden. Because, well, you know, you have that stuff and well, this will help them grow exponentially. And yes, yeah, 65 to 80 degrees is the recommended temperature range that you want to keep your household temperature in as well as your indoor garden. If you, if you want to keep your temperature cooler than that, I mean, you're probably something, you're so, someone else if you keep your house temperature below 60 degrees every day. But if you somehow like it below 60 degrees every day, that's fine as long as, well, you know, you have your plants in a specific area of the garden that'll help them do that. So you might want to keep your house uh, within one specific temperature. Did you know that indoor gardens still need transplanting? Yeah, believe it or not, every single plant will probably have to be transplanted as long as they're planted directly in the ground like you know, our sunflowers and some of our cucumbers and zucchini and the gourds. All this stuff was planted in ground. Most in, all the indoor garden consists of stuff you plant in a pot first. The first, uh, the starting pack is basically just one of those little like dirt square things. I don't even remember what you put under those things. I just like to call them quadratic uh, seed holders because I don't have any better names. And you put them in there and they start them. You keep them there until they're maybe about like six or seven inches tall. And then you transplant them into a small pot. That's and then once they're a little bit taller, you know, like once they're maybe about a month old, then you transplant them into their bigger pots. And then once they're about to get their first fruit, that's when you're going to want to transplant them into their biggest pot. And this is where you can keep them maybe in like your kitchen and stuff like that. Number three, you want to take advantage of the fact that you have little to no pests in your house. I mean, the only pests in your house would probably be your dogs running around if you have any knocking over the seed cart. Unfortunately for us, the area we put it in is really much safe, hopefully. Knock on wood, it is still safe by next year's garden and our fall garden this year. But you wanna, but the only pest is really dogs, so you need to take advantage of this. And also, and also this means you need limited control. There's also not a lot of weeds you, you have to deal with in your house. And well, there's another thing that you could do to help improve that. You could also install like some like, because like another pest would be like flies and they come in and they crap all over your um, plants. You, you might want to install a fly zapper because that's what we used back in 2021 to deal with flies because, well, the chicken crap up there. And well, I think that happens every time you spread chicken crap up in fields, even if it's like a mile away, they come to your house. So a fly zapper would be highly recommend. They will zap the flies as soon as they fly in there. They'll die a really painless death. So if you really want to keep flies out of your little indoor garden, yeah, you can do that, but not recommended. And finally, this can be a plant to apply to certain types of these plants that you might be growing inside. And that is, and that is, you don't have to grow all of them in one specific location. The ones I'm talking about are spices, which includes basil this list, because last list I did, I talked about having basil on a separate list. So this time I've come to see the truth. This also includes green beans and other smaller plants. And yeah, you can you can grow them in like an area without a grow light. And yeah, grow lights are a necessity. Anyways, yeah, stay tuned for my next indoor garden video, which will be dropping hopefully on Thursday. I'll try to release one until until my indoor garden gets to its highest point.